Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this little video blog. Paul Keith Davis here. Just um, wanting to give you guys an update uh, of where I am and what's going on. I, we've had so many of you write asking and uh, just I'm flattered that people, you know, um, are interested in knowing. I appreciate that so much. In fact, I'll just go so far as to say this. I have been overwhelmed. I have been encouraged. My my faith in the bride of Christ has just gone to another place. I know so many people are critical of the church and there's plenty to criticize, but I have discovered there's a body of people out there that know God. I mean, they really know God. I've heard from you. I've heard, I've read your letters. I've seen the sincerity of your heart and the love expressed. And, and um, so I, I'm speaking life back into the bride of Christ. I'm speaking hope that there's a body of people out there that walk with God and uh, carry his anointing, carry his heart, carry his spirit, which has really been the whole essence of everything that I have focused on since, since the day of my surgery, just carriers of the heart of God. And, and I have heard from so many of you. In fact, um, you know, let me just go, go ahead and say, uh, first of all, where we are right now is in my little prayer room. This is not an ideal situation for uh, filming. Uh, it's not the best place to film, but I wanted to just do one session here uh, where I have spent probably five or six hours a day with the Lord for the last 17 months, every single day that I'm home. I've only been gone a few days. So almost every day I'm right here sitting here. And, um, you know, I just thought you might like to get a little bit of a feel of the room because so many things happen right here, right, right here in front of where I'm sitting, the Lord of came. Uh, he just came. And a pillar of light stood right in front of me. And you can accept that if you like. It happened. And um, he spoke to me several times. This was more back in 2015 than lately. It's been a different kind of revelation now. And right here, you know, one time the Lord came and was right here, right in front of where I'm sitting right now. And then to, to my right, right here was another lesser light that I believe the Lord told me was John Paul Jackson and probably one of the most significant um, experiences I had last year came, uh, you know, in June of, of 2015. And I had been having those visitations, or if I can call it that. I didn't see the Lord physically, but I saw him spiritually. And uh, I, fe I was sitting here and, and, and uh, I felt that presence coming in. And I was very attuned to that presence when it came into the room. And I looked right here <laughs> to see if the Lord, and he wasn't there. And, and I was a little baffled, a little surprised. So I just, I kind of just went with it. I was began to flow with that anointing. And all of a sudden something said, look up. And I looked right up here, right up here in this room, right here. And there sat the father on the throne. And I saw it in a vision. I wasn't literally in heaven. I don't want people to, you know, um, to get too whatever about that. But I, I saw it. It changed me forever. So uh, that's my testimony. But it happened right here in this room. And so, um, you know, let me just take whatever's here, <laughs> whatever deposit is here, whatever God has put in this little room right here that Wanda and I made, I just send it to you. I just send it to you. Just a heart to spend time with God a desire to wait on him, just to be still and, um, and know that he's God, to experience refreshing, times of refreshing that comes from the presence of God, times of revelation. It comes in a variety of forms and fashions. And so whatever is here captured in this little room, I just release it to you and pray the Lord to give you a heart for that, a heart to spend time with him every day. Start out short, maybe short periods of time and go longer if you, you know, as long as you can. I will sit here sometimes. I'm not trying to make myself an example by any stretch, but two and three hours sometimes, you know, just depends upon what's going on. 
and uh, and I wanted to to comment and just simply say um, here here are just a handful of the letters I've gotten here and I keep them right beside me because uh, I've got a drawer right here with about 200 250 in it that I've gotten over the last year year and two or three months and um, and some of them are just extraordinary uh, some of them are, are extraordinary and, and I keep those right beside me because I read them sometimes when I feel a little discouraged like this one from uh, I think her name is Vanessa Rein Reinwald I, I hope I said that right I hope you're watching uh, Vanessa uh, you're from uh, Ontario I mean from Alberta Canada uh, your letter meant a lot to me in fact I read it last night and uh, John Moore John and Deborah Moore from out in Montana and Trace uh, Tensey Moore John Bland and his wife um, uh, Mike and, and Mickey Godfrey, Karen McIntyre. These are just some of the ones that I haven't been able to write, but I want you to know Rebecca Green uh, from from uh, from California. And so anyway, just a handful of just meaningful anointed cards and letters that have been sent with messages on it that had an anointing. I could I could take it out of the envelope and feel the anointing. And so I've kept those by my side. All of them I appreciate. But uh, and here is one that I have to comment on because I have no way of communicating with who wrote it except I have an address, but no one's name. They're from Ardenmore, Oklahoma. Um, to uh, to the the long letter here, not a, not a real long letter, but a fairly long letter he, here that they wrote. And when I read this, I wept. It it meant so much to me. And I want you to know that. But uh, the story behind it is that I was in uh, Phoenix, Arizona ministering and administered and poured my heart out and was praying for people and sweat was pouring from my brow. And, and uh, this precious lady said the Lord told her to take a handkerchief and wipe my brow, which she did. Took this handkerchief and wiped my brow. And uh, the Lord just said, put it aside, which she did in 2007. And in 2015, eight years later, the Lord reminded her of it and said, take it and give it to someone else, which she did. And the person got healed and got healing and deliverance from it. And so she, uh, and this, uh, this sister uh, <clears throat> prayed over it and sent it back to me. So anyway, that's pretty meaningful. Uh, I've taken this handkerchief <laughs> and I've received your blessing. And I want you to know I'm thankful. I'm very grateful for that, that uh, you would do that. But otherwise, my health is pretty good. Um, since I've been so transparent with all of you and open, um, I've lost 20 pounds uh, since the surgery. <laughs> and it's not all been good. You might say, that's great. Well, not at all, because I've lost a lot of muscle. And so the Lord and I are talking about that because I spent a lot of work putting that muscle on you know, over the years and it's just gone in a month. And I'm like, what's up with that? You know, but then I've been holding on to this scripture that so many of you have sent to me from Zechariah 9, 12, that says that I am declaring to you this very day that I will restore double to you. So I'm, I have multiple applications for that scripture that I'm applying <laughs> right now. And, um, and I believe the Lord will restore double, but I, you know, if I needed to have some issues dealt with on pride or whatever, if there was some pride in me about working out or whatever, I've yielded that to God, but uh, I haven't had this weight since I was a teenager. So I'm not too concerned and don't be praying too much for me to gain weight because I don't want to go too far the other way. I'm not able to work out right now. So, you know, I have to be careful what weight I do put on. I want to be muscle and something to make me strong for what's coming. Not because I have any desire to make myself look great, but because I do believe we need strength. I believe that. I believe that's a prophetic word for what's coming. Things are not going to always be as they are. And let me repeat that. Things are not always going to be as they are right now. It's going to be some major changes. In fact, I think we're seeing some, some early stages of that where uh, some notable changes are taking place. So I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing okay the, the, as far as the, the titanium plate that covers five vertebrae in my neck, almost the entire length of my neck, four discs were replaced. And so they're, they're really cautioning me. I think my doctor finally got through to me a few weeks, uh, two weeks, or, well, last week, 
And he said, you got to realize you had major spinal surgery. You can't just jump back from that. That's and it finally sunk in with me. That is, you know, a major surgery. And so I've, uh, I've decided to take it easy and um, just let the Lord heal me. I do communion every night. And so uh, right before I go to bed, the last thing I do every night before I go to bed is spend time with the Lord, of course, and then have communion with him and pray over the elements, believing that healing and resurrection life is being imparted to the elements that I, I believe it's more than a ritual. I'm, I believe it's more than just a remembrance of what the Lord did. I believe it's a spiritual transaction. And so I take that bread and I pray over it like it was, you know, uh, life itself. And I believe, I believe something goes into that. I believe there's an anointing that comes out of my mouth that attaches itself to that bread. I believe that. Jesus took the bread and he blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it. And the power is in the blessing. And I believe the very life that was in the blood of Jesus Christ is imparted to us when we do communion. And so I hold on to that and, and I'm praying for the divine nature. I believe that's what the life of the blood is all about. Uh, we have a new covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ. And so I do communion every night believing that he's healing my neck, healing my body, restoring my strength, making me young. Uh, I may not look like it right now. My hair has gone white, but that's all right. I'm not concerned about that. Um, what matters is what we're able to do for the kingdom. And uh, so I want you to know I'm thankful for that. Um, Caleb wants me to be sure and mention uh, that we have added quite a bit of material to our video on demand. Um, let me give you some of the titles. We have between seven and 800 hours, seven, 800 hours of teaching material on our video on demand. But he added uh, two teaching series, uh, myself and Stephen Shelley speaking about William Branham. Now, what, what, I, what that was, we took the hard issues. We took the criticisms that people have about the life and ministry of William Branham. And we hit them head on, very honestly, very accurately. Things that he said, maybe, that you know could have been taken one way or the other. We addressed them. What did he believe about the Godhead? What did he believe about oneness? What did he believe about baptism? What did he believe about his own role? Did he believe he was Elijah? We addressed those. And, uh, and, and even in some cases, give what he said in his own words which how can you argue with a man's own words? And, and when other people are saying he said one thing when he said something else. So we were, we did. And so those are on the video in demand, uh, growing in the supernatural and spiritual awakening, just some single teaching series. And Caleb has added several conferences, which have multiple speakers from Heidi Baker to Chuck Pierce, to Kent Maddox, to whom, whomever, uh, Alabama, Al Alabama's prophetic destiny, which Chuck Pierce and I did unlocking new things, the Vision Conference, Revelation of the Open Book, East Coast, Releasing Breakthrough, and Preparation for Harvest are some of the titles of what he's added. So I hope you can dig into those. There's a very effective search engine on there where you can just type in a phrase. If you remember me saying something or someone saying something, and, and or, or if you're looking for Chuck Pierce, just type in Chuck Pierce and it'll pull up all the videos with Chuck in it. So it's a very effective way to find what you need to, uh, to, to, you know, to follow what we teach and what we believe. But, uh, you know, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged by the, um, the faith of the people that have followed us. Uh, I, you know, I have to be honest, we haven't gotten all good stuff. Of course, we've gotten some criticisms, um, but that's okay. You know what? There's a religious spirit out there too. I believe a lot of it is coming from a religious spirit. So. Um, but I, I'm looking right now at the bride. I'm looking at the ones where you can take a letter out of an envelope and the, mo and the moment you hold it in your hand, you know that's a real born again Christian. And, and um, you know it's somebody that has the spirit of God. And, and so then they have my attention. I read it as if, you know, the Lord himself is speaking to me in some of these. And so, uh, you know, I just want to say that to you because it's very effective. You know. May, Maybe it's a sign, it's an indication that we are moving into a new phase. Maybe it is going to be the love era. That would be awesome. I know my perspective has changed. It has. My, my whole perspective, and I thought I had a pretty healthy one before, but even since my surgery, um, you know, I, I have changed what I have pursued. I've tweaked my own prayer life a little bit. I've tweaked, you know, a little bit of how... I am expecting the Lord to begin to manifest. And I had a, had a visionary experience this week. I'll just share it with you. And um, I was uh, just 
unexpected, you know, and it's one of these things that's almost like I have a dream while I'm awake. I don't know how to put it. It's a little bit of a different thing that started happening in 2015 with me. But, uh, but I just, it's like your, your mind is suspended for a minute and something else takes over and you see it as if it's a dream. Then all of a sudden you come to yourself and realize, oh, I just spent the last five minutes or so seeing this whole image. And so that's the way it happened. I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of what that seemed like. But, uh, but it comes on me at times when I'm least expecting it. That's the thing about it. And it's always when I'm awake. But I was just uh, going about my business, and all of a sudden, I just found my, my natural mind had gone somewhere else. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, I saw myself in a meeting. I saw myself in a meeting. And uh, I was preaching, and a, a word of knowledge went forth, and a prostitute came into the room, a, a full-fledged prostitute came into the walked up to the altar <clears throat> and this was in my experience so I you know I'll tell it the way it happened I hope this is a natural thing that will happen but I walked down to the altar in my in this little visionary experience this dreamlike thing that I had and she walked towards me and she said I'm afraid I'm afraid to step into that light and I said out of my mouth that light is the love of God and then I told her, I said, in this experience, I said, you're not afraid of this love. The demons in you are. <laughs> so I took authority over those demons and I told the little girl to step up into the light. And all she did was walk into the proximity of love. That's what she did. Divine love, God's love. She walked into the proximity and all of a sudden demons started coming out and she started screaming and yelling and and all the, you could literally see demons coming out of her one after another. And it, and it changed my paradigm. I didn't say a word. I didn't command demons to leave. I know we will. Don't misunderstand that. We have authority. We can command the demons to leave and all that. But the, the, the new model of ministry that I saw was just this person that was steeped in sin, merely walked into the proximity of love and got deliverance without one person laying a hand on her, without one person commanding the devils, not one person saying anything like we have been saying, she got completely set free, radically transformed. And then all of a sudden I come to myself and I thought, wow, that, that whole, that whole dreamlike thing just kind of was fascinating. It felt wonderful. And so, uh, as a result of that, I've been contending for that, believing that there are members of the bride of Christ that will be carriers of his heart, as I've been talking about, and that they can just walk within the proximity of sinners and, and demons would scream. Um, and, and, you know, it, it is the anointing. It is the anointing, but it's beyond the anointing. <laughs> the anointing is the Holy Spirit. We know that. But it's a, it's a manifestation of divine love that, that several of the biblical figures experience. And I'm going to do a couple of little blogs after this one. And I'm going to talk about a few of those, some of the things the Lord has been talking to me about over the last couple of weeks. But uh, I just want to leave you with that. I, I just think now let's just pursue love, see what happens. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Well, the kingdom of heaven is, is manifested love, perfect love. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and everything else will be added to you. So it kind of simplifies my prayer life. You know, instead of praying for healing and deliverance and revelation and miracles and signs and wonders and all that, I just, I just seek love knowing that all the other things come with the package. Uh, so it has kind of in a different way focused my prayer. And I want to leave that with you, that we just focus our prayer, the bride of Christ becoming carriers of perfect love, manifesting the heart of God on the earth, bringing in the greatest harvest of souls the world has ever seen, demonstrating perfect love. That's my prophetic word to the bride of Christ today. So I bless you. I just release this to you right now in Jesus' name. I just ask the Lord to come and visit with you like he did with me right here. If there's some way we can impart that, or I don't mean impart it. I know we can't do that. Just impart the vision for it. Impart the heart for it to believe and contend for those kinds of revelations and visitations from the Lord. I believe he wants to give it to us. I believe he wants to give it to us more than we want it. So I release that to you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you for the love you've shown me over this last several months especially. God bless you.